Hey friends! I've made videos for you now from a lot of different places. Kenya, South Africa, England, but today I'm coming at you from a brand new location. A place that most of you have never seen me in before. My closet! <laughs> I outed myself as a spanking fetishist back in 2012, and I've been openly writing and talking about this topic ever since. And a question that I get from a lot of you is, should I also be more open about this part of my life? The short answer is, only if you want to. But I have a longer answer to that question, and that's what this video is about. Let me out! I'm trapped! I have two long-term agendas here. The first one is simple. I want fetishists to be happy. I remember how much shame, fear, and self-loathing I felt for decades about my own fetish. So I want to be a source of friendship and support to anyone else who's going through the same thing. I want to normalize paraphilias as healthy, natural, and normal. And I want to soothe some of the anxieties many fetishists have so that more of us can live happy, fulfilled lives. My second agenda is much more ambitious. I want to see my country stop being a place where it is legally and culturally acceptable to inflict spankings, state-sanctioned child battery, on kids, and start being a place that legally and culturally recognizes that spankings are something that should happen between consenting adults only. So, my opinions about who should be out about a spanking fetish were formed with these two agendas in mind. No, I do not think everyone needs to come out to their mom. No, I don't think everyone needs to come out to their bosses. In fact, it could be a big mistake to do so, since fetish isn't recognized as a sexual orientation and therefore isn't protected by employment discrimination laws. People can be and have been fired or denied security clearances after being outed to their employers for involvement in fetish life, usually by vengeful exes. In most circumstances, it makes sense for people to do what makes them comfortable. And let's be honest, having conversations with your rabbi about how you call your girlfriend mommy is, you know, it's probably not going to be very comfortable, either for you or for the person you're talking to. I don't encourage people to make themselves or others uncomfortable. Wait, should I come out? No, I don't think I should come out. But there are situations that, in my opinion, demand our discomfort. Sexuality occupies an overlap in the Venn diagram of what is personal and what is political. That means there are two contexts in which someone with a minority sexual identity can come out. A personal context and a political one. And both of these contexts have situations in which I do believe that we, as fetishists, have a moral obligation and responsibility to get uncomfortable. First, the personal context. In my opinion, we as people who have a minority sexual identity do have a moral obligation to come out to our partners. Like I've said before, we live in a sex-oriented society. That means people are just going to assume we are sex-oriented too. But if you're oriented towards an object, identity, or activity that is not sex, in other words, if you're a fetishist, then I think your sexual partner or partners have a right to know about it. Lies by omission are, you know, they're still lies. If you've just started dating someone, that's awesome. You're so lucky. You're in a perfect opportunity to build your relationship on a foundation of honesty, transparency, and mutual respect. Look, you don't need to pull out your ABDL toy box or a backlog of stories you downloaded from Bethany's woodshed on the very first date. But the longer you put off this conversation, the harder it's going to be when you finally do have it. And the greater the chance that somewhere down the line, you're going to discover you wasted a lot of time on a relationship that was never going to work. On the other hand, if you're wanting to come out to someone who you've been in a relationship with for a long time, my heart really goes out to you. I've been there. I suspect you've probably tried to bring up this subject before. You've dropped hints about your fetish, hoping they would elicit some kind of response. Or maybe you've tried to ease into the subject with euphemisms like, So, I'm like a tiny, tiny, tiny 
bit into like BDSM? I understand why we do that. I've done that too. BDSM is more mainstream at the moment and even trendy. Like I've said before, these days everyone is kinky. No one is vanilla. So I get it. Saying I'm sort of into BDSM feels easier and safer than saying I'm absolutely obsessed with spanking to the exclusion of every other sexual activity. But if you're a spanking fetishist like me, that line about BDSM is just not going to cut it. That line leads to a few fuzzy handcuffs and, you know, maybe a limp leather flogger from the sex shop downtown. I know most of us go through a phase where we struggle to even say the word spanking out loud, but I'm sorry, you're gonna have to say it and you're gonna have to work to convey how important a fetish is in the lives of fetishists. Regardless of whether you're coming out to someone you just started dating or to someone you've been married to for several decades, here are a few phrases that I have personally found useful when telling someone about my own fetish. Keep these lines in your back pocket, you know? Maybe you can get some mileage out of replacing words and phrases with your own specific preferences. It's like Mad Libs for coming out. Spanking occupies the place in my life that sex occupies in the lives of most people. My sexuality revolves around spankings that are more disciplinary than erotic. I especially like it when spankings include scolding but it turns me off when spankings include unnecessary nudity. My favorite implements are hairbrushes and straps. This conversation is obviously also the perfect time to ask questions. It really isn't fair to expect our partners to express interest in our sexual identities if we don't do the same for them, you know? But if you're already out to your partner, or if you're in a relationship with a fellow fetishist, Congrats, by the way. There is still a situation in which, in my opinion, you have a moral obligation to come out, at least a little bit. Which brings us to the political context. The idea of disclosing a minority sexual identity was always fundamentally political. When Harvey Milk encouraged his gay brothers and sisters to come out in 1978, there were really important political issues at stake. I mean, in only a few years, the Reagan administration press secretary would be recorded laughing with members of the media about the HIV AIDS crisis. Same-sex marriage was illegal, and sexual orientation was not yet recognized as a protected class for things like employment discrimination. In other words, laws needed to change. And coming out was an important part of creating the cultural transformation that would lead to legal transformation. I think spanking fetishists specifically are in a situation where we can push for legal change simply by being a little bit more open about our sexual identities in appropriate ways and in appropriate contexts. And I believe we have a moral obligation to do so. For example, a few years before I personally came out as a spanking fetishist, someone told me she was thinking about spanking her two-year-old daughter. She asked me for my opinion. I, you know, I awkwardly stumbled through a few lines about how science has demonstrated that state-sanctioned child battery is ineffective and counterproductive. But, you know, I wish I had been more direct. I wish I had just said, oh, for me, spanking is so obviously sexual that I really can't imagine ever doing it to a child. Situations where someone brings up state-sanctioned child battery, either in the context of asking for your opinion about it or in the context of joking about it and minimizing the seriousness of child abuse, is the political context in which I think it's time for us to courage up and out ourselves a little. I've been in these situations a few times and I can confirm, yeah, saying things like this makes parents uncomfortable. People really, really do not want to do something sexual to their kids. And I've found that highlighting the mere possibility that spanking is a sexual act for consenting adults only is, you know, it's pretty damn effective at getting parents to reconsider their tactics. But I do think we have the opportunity here to be part of a cultural moment that moves spanking from the parenting column to the sexuality column. 
Parenting culture needs to change so that eventually parenting law will change. The United States needs to catch up with the 58 other states that have already banned child battery. And I believe that appropriate transparency about the fact that spanking is a sexual act is part of what will eventually make that happen. Coming out to your sexual partners is good for your personal relationships. And coming out to everyone else in appropriate political contexts is good for the world. Being inside closets isn't easy. Closets are lonely and they're haunted with ghosts. So unless you've got a friendly ghost like I do, it might be time to start thinking about if and when you want to be a little more open with the people you love.